Hello, friends. Welcome to Chickenlandia and welcome to Bok Talk, your 100% friendly backyard chickens show. I am so happy to be here with you guys today, although I am having technical difficulties right now. Okay. <laughs> Bear with me. Hold on. I got a new system going on today and it's like a little bit crazy. Okay. I think we're good. Okay. I am your host, the president of Chickenlandia. I am a backyard chicken educator in the lovely Pacific Northwest. And you guys, today is episode one of season four. That, that's right. We, I've, I've been doing this for four seasons. There are so many episodes of Bok Talk. So if you are just joining me for the first time today and you haven't listened to all the other episodes, you definitely need to do that. You can watch them on YouTube. You can listen to them on YouTube. Or you can listen to them on all the major podcast apps. So I'm just like super grateful. I've had a great audience, um, a really good reception of this podcast. And, you know, we're just going to keep going. We're going to keep playing this chicken game. And today I'm going to talk about why the heck there are feathers all over your chicken yard and why your chickens look like hot, hot garbage. <laughs> they look like hot garbage. Well, most likely, you know, don't worry. They're most likely just molting. Um, it is molting season right now. So we're going to talk about it. And I'm going to give you some ideas on some things that you can do to help your chickens through their molt and also some problems that you might want to look out for um, and how to deal with those. So, and I do have um, one listener question that I'm going to go over and then I will open up the chat for questions here on YouTube. So um, if you want to submit a question to Bok Pop, Bok, <laughs> let me do that again. If you want to submit a question to Bok Talk and get your five minutes of chicken fame, um, all you have to do is go to welcometochickenlandia.com, go to the contact section and click ask a chicken question. And while you're there, you are definitely going to want to join my mailing list. It is called uh, Chickenlandia Nation. It is the most awesome chicken mailing list in the multiverse. <laughs> um, and I don't spam. I don't send out a lot of emails, but uh, you will get like all the really important news first. And um, I do give everybody that joins a mailing list a discount for my online course. It's called Chickenlandia's Backyard Chickens 101, a chicken course for everyone. And that's my super fun interactive course. It's for beginners and intermediate, intermediate chicken people. Um, it's a great way to get direct access to me. I know a lot of people like I just I get so many questions and so many emails and I get a ton of messages on Instagram and stuff, and I just can't answer every question or else that would be like all I did. <laughs> I, can't, I can't. So, but if you are within the course, you do get direct access to me and also my um, co-instructor, the Chickenlandia presidential advisor, who's very knowledgeable. Um, and, and that's because you can ask questions within the course. So, Anyway, it's a great course. I'm super proud of it, and I hope to see you there. Okay, um, I am going to say hi to some people in the chat. Ooh, Chickenlandia president, presidential advisor is here today. Yay! Uh, Teresa, hello. Catherine is here. Duval, City Girl Gardener, hello. Uh, Jay Cree, I hope I'm... Pr pronouncing that right. Ellen, Eileen is here. Greek philosophy. Joey. Roger Stewart. Uh, Renee. Paradise Acres. Oh gosh, that sounds so good right now. Paradise Acres. <laughs> Bean and Briar and Lillian Wolf. Lily's Lops. Thank you guys so much for being here today. <laughs> I'm glad you made it Greek philosophy. Okay, and I I majored in philosophy in college. <laughs> I 
I really did. And, and now I teach about chickens. Okay. <laughs> okay. So before we begin, I do need to make two very important announcements because you guys know I got to pay those chicken bills. These bougie chickens, they keep pecking and scratching their way into my wallet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I got to pay those bills. So uh, I just want to let you guys know, as always... This podcast was brought to you by the folks at My Favorite Chicken. My Favorite Chicken is my favorite online shop to get my chicken feed. I get my my scratch and peck feed there. It's non-GMO, organic, socially responsible feed. I love it. Um, I get my chicken supplies, all my fun chicken stuff, um, chicken treats like chicken fondue. They have one called that. <laughs> it's really good. It's really uh, a good quality treat. Um, that is myfavoritechicken.com, and I'm going to put a link for you guys down in the show notes. Uh, this podcast was also brought to you by the folks at Small Pet Select. Small Pet Select is a uh, local company to me, and they have an online store that I absolutely love. Right now, I am using three products uh, from them. One of them is their organic pine shavings, um, which is great. They're great for deep litter. Um, and even if you're not doing deep litter, they're still great. Um, another one is their pet greens. And what it basically is, is you grow sprouts inside this little pouch. And it's super easy to use. Like you, you can like cut the tops off and keep giving them to your chickens. And especially now, like we're going into the colder months very soon. And so it's a good idea to stock up on some things like this because you can get greens into your chickens this way when they can't find it in their natural environment. Um, and the other thing I'm using right now is their flaked oyster shell. My chickens really like it. So you can check out these and their other chicken products. And also they have products for other fur babies on their website. Um, I am going to put a link in the show notes and in the description for you. Okay. All right. So I don't know about you guys, but um, my chicken yard looks terrible right now. It just like, <laughs> it looks so ugly. I don't even want to shoot video in there. <laughs> like I tell, tell my editor, like, can you use the, the footage from another time? Because there, there's just like these dirty, scraggly feathers all over the ground. And it's always like the white ones, like the really dirty white feathers. <laughs> They're all over the ground. And almost all of my chickens look super scraggly. Um, They're missing feathers. My frizzles look absolutely terrible. They look like they went through the washer and dryer. <laughs> <laughs> and they're and they're dry clean only like that's how they look right now especially my frazzles like I mean they always look bad because um I've talked about them before on my channel but frazzles are like they have a genetic problem because they weren't bred very well so their feathers are really bad um and it, you know put on top of that them molting and it's just like it's awful they look terrible <laughs> um but thank goodness everyone's eating drinking pecking scratching um they're doing really well and most of you guys know I've I've had some illness in my flock lately and so I'm very grateful for how my chickens are doing right now but they are going through their molt so when chickens get, go through their yearly molt they drop their dirty old used up feathers and they replace them with brand new ones. And right now in the United States, we are at the very end of the summer and the very beginning of the fall. And so if your chickens haven't started, they probably will soon, depending depending on their age. Um, and they can go through lighter molts or full molts at other times of the year, um, usually in the spring, but it is most... It, it's not really that noticeable in those times usually, and it's most commonly around this time. So they can also be pushed into a molt. Like if they have an illness um, or they had a really big stressful event, they can be pushed into a molt. But basically they molt at this time because they need to have better protect protection through the cold winter months. 
Um, and sometimes a random chicken will molt in the dead of winter. And it's always a frizzle. <laughs> and it's like, oh my gosh, why are you doing that now? Uh, <laughs> and it's awful. So, I mean, if that happens, um, you will need to do some things. You're like, you will need to take special care of them if they're molting in the dead of winter. Um, and I'll put a video about that, like about what to do if you need supplemental heat in the winter and how to do it safely. You don't, you know, usually you will not need this, but there are special circumstances. I'll put a link about that in the show notes. Okay, I'm going to get a drink. Not, it's not a real drink. <laughs> it's, it's apple cider vinegar. I could use a drink right now, though. <laughs> All right. So uh, chickens go through actually many molts um, from the time that they're babies until they become adults. So, um, and this is why sometimes people get alarmed because their teenage chickens look really bad, like they have missing feathers. And but it's probably just that they're going through a juvenile molt, and you know, very soon you'll see them start to look better. Um, of course you should check to make sure that they don't have anything going on like parasites or bullying or feather picking. Cause sometimes those kinds of behaviors can happen when they're juveniles. That's when they're, they will rear their ugly heads. So make sure there's nothing like that going on. Um, but just remember, like, think about when, when baby chicks are little, they're like little super fuzzy <laughs> baby chicks and, and they're really soft. They look like little cotton balls. And then they have to develop all those feathers. So they're gradually getting rid of this fuzz and getting their feathers. And so they're going to go through a lot of molts during that time. Um, but you usually don't really notice it. Sometimes in the juveniles you will because they look pretty bad. Um, normally for an adult chicken, it takes about a month or two for them to get through their molt. Uh, sometimes it can be a little bit longer. Sometimes it can be less than that. Uh, uh, you know, usually when a chicken is like a really good layer, they will molt faster and it'll be a more severe, like a, a very strong molt. I don't know. Is that the right word? Strong, <laughs> a hard molt. And they'll like lose all their feathers at once. And you're like, oh my gosh. But, uh, you know, that's actually not great, but they've been bred that way. Um, like you definitely would want it to at least take a few weeks. So it's not too hard on them. Um, so during this time, because a lot of their bodily resources and all the energy they have and the nutrition that they eat, a lot of that is going towards building new feathers. Um, this is very hard work for a chicken, uh, and for anyone, like <laughs> for anything with feathers, uh, it's hard work. And, um, sometimes they can get pretty worn out from it. Um, if you see a chicken that looks lethargic or sickly, um, of definitely check them out to make sure that they don't have any other issues going on because they're pretty vulnerable when they're molting. So, you know, sometimes illness will pop up or paras parasite infestation will pop up during this time. So definitely make sure they don't have anything else going on. Um, but it's possible they could just be going through a really hard molt and they're, they're struggling because they're like, they've just been really depleted. So if this does happen, um, I would go ahead and bring them inside and do the rest method on them. So um, for those of, of you that have been following me for a long time, you've probably heard me talk about the rest method. It's an acronym, R-E-S-T. Um, and it's basically just a very simple guide for some TLC that you can give a chicken when they're sick. Um, or when they're, they're like super stressed out or they're having a really bad molt. Um, I will put a link in the show notes and then in the description of a video where I describe all of it and I tell you exactly what to do. It's very easy. Um, but usually you would have to do this maybe just like a day or two. I mean, I would just keep an eye on them. And if they perk up, try and get them back out with their flock as soon as possible. But, you know, just give them some good... TLC, bring them inside, do the rest method with them, and hopefully they'll turn around pretty quickly. Um, in general, if you want to just help your whole flock through their molt, you can supplement a little bit, and I mean a little bit, 
okay? <laughs> Cuz people go crazy with the protein. They really do. And if you give too much protein, it can cause other problems, um like it can cause some digestive problems and some other issues. So you don't want to do that. Just give them a little bit more protein than you normally do. Um what I do is I just offer my chickens some healthy protein treats like scrambled eggs or some um, grubs or some mealworms. Um, like if you have lean meats or whatever that's left over from your family meal, you can do that. Um, another really great thing you can do is give them a two-week course of some good chicken vitamins. Um, usually they're sold like ele um, electrolytes, vitamins, or probiotics, and that would be great to give them during this time. Um, if you don't want to buy anything, you can do homemade electrolytes. There's tons of recipes online for homemade chicken electrolytes. You can totally do that. Uh, and you can also give them a little bit of nutritional or brewer's yeast just a few times a week, just a sprinkling on their food just to get them a little bit of extra uh, nutrition, extra vitamins and minerals so that they can get through their molt. Because mostly it's just that, you know, they're just using, you know, all of their reserves are going towards getting those new feathers in. So um, autumn is not only molting season, or at least I don't, I don't consider it just molting season. I also consider it parasite season. Um, and that is due to uh, weather changes in a lot of places. And also because, like I was saying before, um, chickens can get very vulnerable during their molt or more, more vulnerable than they are during other parts of the year. So I would definitely make sure, and if you see missing feathers and stuff, and definitely if you see like irritation on the skin or the chickens just don't look like they're very healthy, um, you want to rule out external parasites and then also rule out bullying, um, rooster damage, which is what happens when um, roosters are a little overzealous because <laughs> they can be, they can get, they can get a little overzealous. So um, rule that out and take care of that if you need to. Um, and also feather picking, like just watch your flock. If you see that chickens are, picking other like you have to see like you know sometimes people will look at chicken behavior and they'll they'll see like a bunch of chickens dust bathing and they'll see another chicken pecking at their feathers and they will think that that chicken is feather picking but that is likely not the case like i'm talking about actually seeing chickens pulling feathers out of another chicken and sometimes, most of the time, they will eat the feathers. Okay, so um, that's what I'm talking about. Not just like pecking, you know, if they're taking a dust bath, they will peck at each other's feathers and stuff. And and usually that's nothing to be alarmed about. Um, but it's just, this is just a time when you really want to keep an extra eye on them. Um, and you may also want to be extra diligent about uh, the nutrition that you're giving them, of course. And then also just... You know, if you're doing some immune boosting stuff, like maybe you're giving them um, oregano and thyme, which we've talked about before on this channel, um, you can, you know, make sure that you're being diligent about that. Or you can buy them like a good uh, prepackaged herbal supplement. Scratch and Pick has one called Cluck and Good Herbs. Um, and that has oregano and thyme in it and plus a lot of other herbs that's, that are good for them. So um, if you don't do that any other time of the year, Right now is a good time to do that. Um, and then you can give them some rescue remedy in their water too. And rescue remedy is a flower essence. Um, it's from Bach Flower Remedies. They make one for um, for animals that you can use and you just put a couple of drops in, of it in their water. And it just helps to kind of calm them down and get them through this season, which can be a little more stressful for them than other times of the year. Um, and just make sure that they have a place to dust bathe. That's very important right now because you want them to ward off parasites. Okay. All right. Now, oh, Rock and Sea Homestead is here. Hello. Kevin Lee is here. Thank you for being here. 
All right. Okay, so um, here is our question for today. It's from Amber. And the question is, uh, my chickens stopped laying eggs recently, and I'm not sure why. They are two and a half years old. I did change their watering system and put a new pine put new pine shavings down in their coop and run. I'm not sure if maybe that stressed them out. Also, about two weeks after they stopped laying, I noticed one of them, my Americana, had bald spots on both her shoulders. Maybe they're stressed and starting to pick at her. She's the smallest of the three I have. I haven't changed their feed. They have historically done well with the feed I give them. I don't see any signs of parasites. What are your thoughts? Thank you for any help you can provide. All right. So, Amber, um, I'm glad that you're keeping a good eye on your chickens uh, to make sure they don't have anything going on that will, you know, that should be of concern to you. Um, I had two thoughts when you sent me this message. I think you sent it to me a couple of weeks ago. Um, and that is that your chickens may have stopped laying due to the temperatures wherever you are. Like if you are, if you are in an area where it is hot, um, there's still a lot of places, especially in the U S where it's hot right now. Um, and definitely we had a pretty hot summer. Um, but it, when the temperatures get really high, your chickens will not lay as well or if at all. Okay. That does happen. And it, it happens more the older they get, you know, um, it, maybe it didn't happen last year because they were younger and they just kept laying. But as they get older, you'll see that, um, you know, they'll, they'll be more affected by the temperatures outside. Um, and then, you know, even if it has cooled off now and you're, if you're still not getting eggs, it's likely that they've gone right from it being too hot to lay to going into their molt. So, and they do not lay usually during their molt, okay? Um, especially since you said your America, Americana is starting to lose feathers. That to me, I thought, okay, they're, they're likely molting, especially since it sounds like you've ruled everything out. So, um, you know, I said that uh, chickens, when chickens are molting, that they're working really, really hard. So all their resources are just going to their new feathers and... Um, you know, some of them will continue to lay because they've been bred just to lay, lay and lay, but that's actually not very healthy for them. So it's good for them to, to stop laying when they're molting. Um, if they continue to lay, you know, don't worry about it, you know, during their molt, if they continue to lay, um, it, it is harder on them, but I wouldn't worry about it too much. Cause honestly, there's not really much you can do about it. And like you could take some really drastic measures, but I wouldn't do that. Um, I would just give them some extra nutrition and like we talked about earlier in the podcast and, and, you know, if they're happy and they're picking and scratching and they seem healthy, I would say that's a win. Okay. And don't worry, your, the eggs will come back soon. They will start laying soon. Okay. And then winter will come, but that's another story. <laughs> We're going to be talking about that. Uh, I'm putting out, actually putting out a video on Wednesday about all the things you should be doing right now before winter starts. Because, you know, I mean, just, I swear, time goes by so fast. Like, I feel like summer just started and now we're going into fall. So there are some chores that you should be doing right now before we get into winter, before it turns into a frozen wasteland. <laughs> <laughs> if that's if you live in a place like that, um, and even if you don't, I think it's going to be a good video um, for people to 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 watch right now, um, so they can get all these chicken chores out of the way before winter starts. So Amber, thank you so much for your question. I really appreciate it, and I hope that was helpful to you. So I am going to open up the chat for questions. Uh, if you would please post your question in all caps so that I can see it with these um, soon to be 48 year old eyes. <laughs> I still, I might go like this. <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely like write it in all caps. Almost Homestead says it feels like winter up here. It's coming fast. Um, it was like 39 degrees last night. <laughs> 
And I was like, I just, you know, dislike, dislike. I don't like the winter. <laughs> Okay, so Shauna asked the question, my roosters are 22 weeks old. They have become mean. Does this get any better as they age? So I try not to think of it. I totally get it. Like I've got, you know, if you watch my channel, you know I have Philippe and he tries to kill me every day. <laughs> Uh, it's funny because he's little, but when they're big roosters, it's not so funny. Like it's a, it's a problem. Um, you know, usually their first season is the worst. That does not mean that they will completely grow out of it. Uh, and, and they may never, they may never be better. It, it just, it just depends. But a lot of times they're the most rude during that first year of their life. So hopefully, you know, when they pass their first spring, they'll calm down a little bit. Um, that's a possibility. I would try and pick them up as much as you can, walk around with them as much as you can. Um, another thing you can do is just when you walk into your coop, you have like a, a broom or something with you and it's not to hit your chicken. <laughs> like don't do that. <laughs> Don't, we don't, we don't talk about hitting chickens in Chickenlandia, but what you can do is use it to kind of direct him away from you so that he doesn't have, you know, so that your roosters don't have a chance to attack you. Um, it's a bummer when that happens. Um, this is why I say you definitely want to have a plan for roosters and I know hindsight's twenty twenty, so I totally get it, but, um, you want to try and have a plan for extra roosters, um, either decide how you will deal with them humanely or, um, you know, somewhere where you can rehome them. But, you know, the good thing is, is that we have all these online resources now. You may be able to go online to like a local Facebook group and find a great home for them um, if you want to go that route. But uh, if not, just the best thing for you to do if you want to keep them is just to prevent them from attacking you and, and go in to the coop confident with a, you know, a, a broom, a big stick, <laughs> walk confidently and carry a big stick. <laughs> uh, Catherine R asked, does molting cause soft eggs or no eggs? It can be, it could be both. Like they could lay a couple of soft eggs. Um, it would be better for them if they just stopped laying during that time. But you may see some soft eggs, especially at the beginning and the end of their molt. Um, so either way, it can be, you know, it can cause both of those. Um, you still want to supplement them with some calcium during this time. So chickens should always, laying hens should always have a calcium supplement available to them at all times. And that would be like oyster shell, um, you, uh, there's a, a, Scratch and Peck has a limestone calcium supplement um, or you can take their clean eggshells and crush them up and feed them back to them. But if you do that, you want to make sure to also give them some like veggie scraps that have some, a high amount of calcium in them to, because it's, it's kind of like a closed cycle if you just give them their own eggshells back to them. So you want to replenish that as much as you can. Um, but yes, they can, you know, in short, they can cause soft eggshells and definitely no eggs. Um, at what age is the norm to start to start molting? Um, usually after they, you know, they, they may go through a light molt. Um, it, it depends on when they're, you know, when they, when they hatch, uh, what they're, you, <laughs> what am I trying to say? It depends on what season you get baby chicks in. Okay. But usually their first spring, um, uh, obviously they're going to be babies so they're going to be they're going to be having their little molts during that time and then they might have like an off-season molt in the fall um and then in the springtime you will you will i mean not in the springtime gosh i am messing this up <laughs> let me get another drink of my apple cider vinegar water they might have an off-season molt in the spring and then in the 
uh, late summer, early fall, you'll see their fo- their first molt. Okay, but m- remember, they're molting all the time when they're little. Like you, you will. There's a lot of feathers involved, a lot of replacement of feathers involved as they're growing. Sorry, I'm just looking. I'm just scrolling down. So Lisa asks, I have an Easter egger that has always laid a green egg. Six weeks ago, the green egg stopped. Can their egg change in color or is this just molting? So it, it, they can fade. They can definitely fade. But a, a, an Easter egger will, will lay one color of egg through the, the majority, through their life. Okay. Um, it sounds like she is just molting and she has stopped laying. So that's why you're not seeing the green, the green egg. And it could also be temperature related, like whatever. I don't know what the climate is where you are, but it could be that too. But I, they can't, they won't change the color of their eggs. It, it just will get, you'll, you'll notice like um, as she ages, they may fade a lot. So Bean and Briar says, do chickens need their beaks trimmed? I would say they only need their be- beaks trimmed if for some reason um, it's grown too long. Like some chickens will get a condition. It's called like parrot beak where um, it's a nutritional deficiency. And I think it can be genetic too, but it's where their their beak kind of like grows. It's got like a really big hook on it, you know, at the at the front. Um, and that may need to be, um, you know, shaved down a little bit, filed down a little bit or trimmed. Um, if you have a chicken with scissor beak, then you may need to trim it. But in general, chicken's beaks should not need to be trimmed. Um, if they're, if they have access to the ground where they can peck and scratch, then the, those actions should allow them to keep their, their beaks nice and and file down. Um, sometimes chickens on wire will end up with a beak that's too long just because they're not able to practice their, their instincts, um, you know, so that their bodies do what it's supposed to do and everything stays normal. Now, if you buy, uh, pullets grown like 12 week old chickens from a hatchery, they may send them to you with their beaks trimmed. And this is something that they do because when chickens are in confined places, uh, there can be problems with pecking because they don't have anything to do. Like they're, they're overcrowded and they're bored and that's when bad habits start. Um, so they, they may peck each other, they may hurt each other. And so in order to fix that, uh, factory farms will trim the beaks of the chickens. Like, like basically their, their beak is very short. Um, but this is not the case for anyone that's watching my channel. <laughs> you know, you're giving your chickens enough room. You're giving them ground to pick and scratch on. Um, you know, they have things to do. They have enrichment they have a good life, so they you don't need to trim their beaks unless they have some kind of condition going on where it needs to be trimmed. Okay. So Elise asks, how would you describe a hard molt? Um, I, I mean, you wouldn't, you will know it. When you see it, like lots of feathers gone at once. Like they literally, it's like, it's like they were, it's like a pillow with a hole in it and you shake it and all the feathers go everywhere. <laughs> You're like, oh my gosh. And then the pillow's flat. Um, yeah. I mean, you can't mistake it. It's a lot of feathers gone at once. Um, frizzles go through the worst molts just because their feathers are already weird. <laughs> um, and then, like I said, real good layers sometimes will go through really hard molts. And certainly if they look like they're struggling through it, like I would call that, I would call that a hard molt, but usually it's characterized by just losing a lot of feathers at once.
Uh, Dead Game Boxing asks, dipping and washing, what do you use? Something good for feathers and bugs. Um, I don't dip. I, you know, if I, if I use, um, something for parasites, like if I have an active parasite infestation, I don't really dip them in the, whatever I'm using, because, um, to me, I think that can be a tad dangerous for them. Like they just get too much of the substance on, on them. Um, and that's if I'm using something like permethrin, which would be the most, uh, synthetic thing that I would put on them. Um, it's, you know, it's kind of like, it's not natural, but it is a, a synthetic version of like a chrys chrysant. Oh my gosh. I can't say that word. It's a flower and it starts with a CH. <laughs> But I, I can't say it right now. It's just not going to happen. Okay. But, uh, permethrin, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's the, it's not completely natural, but that is what I use. Um, and I would put that in a spray bottle and spray it on them so that I can control really how much exposure they get. I just don't, I just don't feel comfortable exposing their, exposing their whole body. Now, if you're going to give them a bath, um, there's like chicken shampoos that you can buy, <laughs> believe it or not. Um, but if you have like Dawn soap, uh, a lot of people use that and it's cheap and it's super available. Uh, you can put a little bit of it in some water and get some warm water and just, uh, bathe them in that. Um, and that actually will kill bugs too, because a lot of these animals, like they, these tiny critters, like, um, the soap, uh, whatever is in the soap will kill them. Okay. But I wouldn't, it won't like I, if, the, if you have an active infestation, I was, I would use another product in addition to giving them a bath. Okay. I hope that helps. Anna Rodriguez says chickens are so cute and sassy. <laughs> they sure are. All right, I'm going to do one more question, guys. I know there's lots of questions. Okay, Val said, Chris, okay. Chrysanthemum. Chrysanthemum. <laughs> Sorry. I told you it's not going to happen. <laughs> it's not going to happen. All right, one more question. And I might, I might be out of questions, actually. Oh, Kevin Lee asks, are Rhode Island red hens more aggressive than other hens? Uh, not necessarily. Um, I, they don't, you know, these are, Rhode Island reds are, are really bred to go into people's backyards. Um, you know, if you buy them from a hatchery, they're, they're usually bred to be just, uh, nice birds, you know, easy birds to take care of. They're very popular. It could be that, you have a batch of them that is cranky, you know, for whatever reason, um, whatever their genetics are, you know, they're just, um, uh, more aggressive, but in general, I wouldn't, I wouldn't generalize them that way. I'll say it that way. Um, in my experience, there aren't any more aggressive than other, other laying hens. Um, certainly if, if they have, things going on in their lives that make them frustrated, like they're overcrowded, they're not getting enough food, um, they're getting bored for whatever, you know, whatever reason they don't have enough enrichment, then those things can make them get aggressive. But really that's for any chicken. Um, and definitely just keep in mind that any, any flock of birds, regardless of breed, if you put new birds in with them, that bird is going to get attacked. So there is a process that you have to follow in order to integrate that bird slowly into your flock, that bird or birds. You're get, you, you should try and integrate more than one bird at a time because it's such a, it's a difficult process for both the new birds and your existing flock. It's a, it's a stressful process. I'm not saying don't do it, but it is, it is stressful for them because they have that pecking order instinct and it's really strong. So it doesn't matter at that point what kind of birds you have. They're going to attack any newcomers. And so you have to do it slowly. And I'll put a link in the description 
um, to a, and in the show notes, to a video that I made about integrating new chickens into an existing flock. It's easy, um, but it is something that you have to be mindful about because they will get mean. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you to my moderator and co-producer, Kelsey Paulus, also known as the Chickenlandia Presidential Advisor. And she is. She advises me every single day, I swear. <laughs> when, I, when I need help, I call her. Uh, <laughs> thank you to Talking to Crows for editing this episode and to Double M Ranch for their wonderful podcast art. If you enjoyed this episode, guys, please give me a thumbs up if you're here on YouTube. If you are listening on, you know, in podcast form, uh, please rate and review this uh, this podcast. It really helps. It really does. It 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 puts my podcast in front of more people's eyes when it has more positive reviews and more ratings. It just it really helps me out. So I do appreciate that. Um, but the one thing that I want you to remember above anything else is that you are always welcome in Chickenlandia. Bye. So now I have to figure out how to turn this off. Okay, I figured it out. <laughs> Bye.